Whoa, hey everyone. <laughs> Are we live? Are we live? We're live, finally. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is our very first live stream here on the Spro channel, and I just wanted to welcome all of you for, and thank you for joining us and tuning in today. It's going to be a, an interesting show. It's the first time out doing this. I actually host a, another show on our on my personal channel, the Ono Coffee channel, on Thursday nights, and that's about coffee and cigars. And we do that every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you're interested in talking more coffee and a lot of cigars as well, then uh, be sure to tune in. That That's the Ono Coffee channel at 8 p.m. on Thursday night. So today's episode is our very first one, like I said, and it's uh, August 3rd, Tuesday morning. And so here's the thing. So as we're doing this, you know, whether you're here in the live or watching the replay, let me know what you think about the time, the date, or I mean, if you're... Does Tuesdays 10 a.m. is that a good time for you guys to uh, to join the live stream, or should it be at a different time that's more convenient? So let me know. I'd like to I'd like to know. I'm trying to figure out exactly where we should place this, and uh, yeah, and then also whatever you'd like to cover, or like for me to cover, drop those in the comments as well. If uh, you drop them in the re in the comments during the replay, I'll address them next week, and. Yeah, so we can continue talking about coffee. And so anything you're interested about coffee, feel free to ask. Drop them in the comments below, and uh, we'll get to them. All right, so what are we going to do today? We're going to start off by making some coffee, and we're going to just talk about coffee and how to make it and how to perhaps make it a little bit better at home, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so first off, we need coffee. And so coffee is one of those things where you want to... You want to buy as best a coffee as you can. I mean, how do we? How, so, just yesterday, I was on one of the, the coffee forums. I was reading this this guy's comments, and he was talking about how he was buying good coffee. So, I'm presuming that he's going to some, you know, no name coffee roaster and buying their coffee. So he's like, I, I bought this good coffee, but I've been trying to brew it, but I can't get the results that I want. And I think I said to him, I said, hey, you know, did you, did you happen to go and ask the people there to help you match a coffee to your taste? Like, for example, coffee can have a wide range of flavors and, or just, just a wide range of tastes. And you really need to find a coffee that really is in tune with your preferences. Like, for example, if you're the kind of person that likes chocolatey, nutty type of coffee, and you go to a place, and no matter how great a reputation a, a coffee roaster can have, if they, if you go to them and say, "I want this coffee," and it's a bright, acidic, you know, f lightly tropical fruit coffee that's just kind of like lightly bodied and all that, no matter how much you brew it, it's just not going to become chocolate and nuts. It's not. It's not going to take on the character of coffee that you prefer. So it's important for you to not just buy from a good source, but also to talk to the source and say, hey, this is my preference for coffee. What do you have that's, that's close or matches that? And so hopefully you'll, you'll go to a place that has a nice range of coffees that will meet, you know, we'll have coffees that will kind of suit your, ta your palate, you know, give you something close maybe not exactly what you want but maybe closer so that you can have a better appreciation for it so this guy is spending all of his time trying to brew his coffee trying different ratios and timings of brewing and making it much more complex than it really needs to be you know for me it's like i brew coffee a lot of course and especially in my private brewing meaning the times when i bring coffee just for myself you know i'm not really putting a tremendous amount of effort into it I'm actually just kind of like, you know, working with the basic concepts and brewing it up, and it's a fantastic coffee. Now, I do realize that a lot of that is because, you know, I've been brewing coffee now professionally for 20 years, so there's a big difference when it comes to that. So, but what I'm saying is that I think a lot of people take too much, not care, but they, they, they worry too much about getting it, quote unquote, correct or getting it right. When you don't really need to worry about that. And that's what we're going to go through today. I think as long as you have some basic tools 
and basic um, ways to approach it, it should be relatively an enjoyable cup. So today, what are we going to do today? We're going to brew some coffee, and I've got this great coffee. This is the the Granitos de Altura de Ortiz, the Finca Ortiz 1800. This is a white honey process, uh, what they call their Lot 16. And so this is actually made by um, a family up in the Tarazu Valley in Costa Rica. And they're really a great family. Like the father started out the business, of course, years ago. And, you know, he, uh, let, me, let me give you a little bit, I'll pull up the, our page for it. So this is a coffee that, that I found several years ago. All right, this is this is the coffee. The Granitos de Altura de Ortiz. So what is Granitos de Altura? And so Granitos de Altura is basically the what we call the beneficio. So the 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 part of the farming operation that processes the coffee. And then Finca Ortiz 1800. Or, Ortiz 1800 is actually the farm that the coffee comes from, and it's at 1,800 meters above the Tarasu Valley, and it's their lot number 16, which they did a white honey process, and the white honey processing is, so a coffee cherry, or yeah, a coffee cherry, a coffee bean is housed inside a cherry, and the cherry, the bean has a mucilage, a pulpy mucilage that surrounds it, and it, the best way to describe the mucilage is that it has a it's kind of the texture and um, pulpiness of a grape, right? The interior of a grape, but it's very thin. And so the honey processing is when you strip the hull away from the, the beans, leaving the pulpy mucilage. Now, you've got different degrees of honey, right? So there's, there's what people will call black or red, orange, yellow, white. And what those different degrees are is, imagine if this is the thickness of your mucilage that's coating your cherry. Black is, we're just gonna leave. We're just gonna remove the, oh, oh sorry. We're gonna remove the hull and we're gonna leave the full mucilage. And then the other degrees are, a red, are a red, orange, yellow, white, is decreasing the amount of mucilage left on to the bean. And that can be done of a, a different, a different ways. They can either be done in water fermentation where you put the, the, be, the, the beans in the water to allow fermentation to dissolve or to the fermentation to eat away the, the, the sugary pulpy matter. And then you'll leave that in there just for a little while to, re, to reduce and remove the amount of mucilage you want. Or you can do use what they call in Spanish a uh, demucilagenadora, de which is this machine that spins against the, the against the grate that actually scrapes the mucilage off of the beans. And so you, you just remove a little bit. So the white honey is almost completely removed. And then what they do is they take that 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 cherry, uh, that bean, and then they dry them on racks, on raised beds that, well, you, you let it dry. And it takes about, at that point, it'll take about 15 to 17 days to dry and they let it dry out and, and that's pretty much it and then they'll mill it and so they they actually do all of this there at the farm at the beneficio granitos de altura de ortiz and so these three girls are the three sisters that actually run most of the operations today so to the far left is uh jc then diana and then johanna and johanna's the oldest the one on the right and um yeah, they make great coffee. They're really great family. So we spent a lot of time with them. And I really enjoy the, the coffees that they make. And so, like I'm saying, so when you're a coffee roaster, you're trying, well, well ideally, you're trying to find a variety of coffees that people will, will enjoy from different, different, uh, oh, there's Mark. Hey, Mark, what's going on? How's Coronado? Don't forget to go see... Um, what is it, um, Bird Rock, right? Because Coronado's the island across from uh, San Diego, right? With the fancy hotel. And then it's a little bit, a little bit early. So yeah, yeah, go see, go see. Maybe you'll see Jeff. Jeff Taylor should be out there somewhere. But um, back to what we're saying. So the, the Ortiz family, 
runs this this uh, operation. It's really great coffee. And so we're going to, as you can see, it's uh, 1,800 meters, Santa Maria de Dota in Tarazu, Costa Rica. Sun-dried, white honey, Katuai Katura varietals, shade-grown, just a really, really great coffee. So let's get into it. <laughs> That's probably the best way to talk about it, right? Oh, you're at that hotel. Oh, that hotel. That hotel is very fancy. I've only had drinks there, but very nice, very nice. All right, so today we're going to take our coffee. And as you can see here, here, if you want to try it, you can get it at our website, sporocoffee.com. All right, so now we're going to get our scale. So here's the thing. So, like, people ask me, uh, what, how much coffee do you use? And I always try to tell them, you know, what our ratio at Spro has always been to make coffee, uh, our, our ratio is basically, basically, two grams of coffee for every finished ounce. Meaning that if I'm gonna make a 12 ounce cup of coffee, we're going to use 24 grams of, of coffee. Yeah. So, it's, to me it's a very simple calculation. Two for one, right? So one, for every ounce, two grams. Uh, it's a place called Bird Rock. Um, it's a little bit away from Corona, like it's a little, Coronado, it's a little bit, uh, North, um, well, at least the one, the main one that I went to, and but it's it's a great great little coffee shop. There's also a bunch of others like more downtown and centralized in uh, San Diego. Uh, I think Bird Rock do, does have a couple of locations though. But Bird Rock was this guy who was, um, and I was introduced to him by Annie Ruth Comentel, one of my friends who's a grower from El Salvador, and so. The guy who used to own Bird Rock was also her one of her customers. So when we were, her and I were traveling in San Diego, oh gosh, maybe five, six years ago. And that's when I got to meet this guy, a really nice guy, very beachy, very typically California beachy kind of guy, the kind you think about from the movies. But recently, well, not recently, I guess it's been three, four years, three years, he sold the company to Jeff Taylor from... Oh, no. What is Jeff Taylor's company's name? Anyway, the, you know, Jeff, he, he owns that company in uh, Kansas. Tulsa? Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But go there, check it out. Bird Rock's good. There's a couple other ones that I, I remember seeing that I went to. Nice, you know, typical third wavy kind of like, you know, everything's kind of designed and that kind of thing. But nice scene, nice scene out there. What's the, are you, is it, oh no, I guess there's no, oh, it's August, so maybe, are you there for Comic-Con? Comic-Con's crazy. Like, I, I went there one year, and I, I was, that same trip, actually, and something was happening in the city of San Diego, and so the, the hotels were very few and far between, and I ended up staying at this Motel 6, Kind of close, kind of close to where Bird Rock is, like pretty away from the downtown area. And it was hundred thirty dollars a night, hundred thirty dollars for a Motel Six. I was like, whoa, that's that's crazy, that's crazy. Had a nice cortado from Lever Machine around here. Excellent, excellent. I love it, I love it. All right, so where are we with it? Okay, so we're going to use our scale. So this is the MFEI scale. I I use this for a, I've used this for a long time. I've had this actually I've had this scale for like ten years. I don't use it all the time, but it's it's a great little scale that works. And you can get this this scale or the more, more the more the more current model of this scale for like eight dollars on Amazon. The link that I have down in the description is like eight dollars, so it's pretty affordable. So we're gonna take our and tear it out. Of course, I can't see it from that angle. All right, so now we're going to take our Ortiz, and I have this one in the in the, the jar. So we're going to weigh out 24 grams, because we are going to make 12 ounces.
All right, so 24 grams of coffee. What's going on, Rusty? Good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah, we're just cigars. are going to be on Thursdays, but this, this here's going to be straight coffee, talking coffee. All right, so we got 24 grams of coffee here. Ooh, expertly roasted, because listen, that smell and the color. Here's the color. Look at that stunning roasting, right? Right? Oh, whoa, you're, you can't see that. Let me pull up back on the... Stunning the roasting. Look at that. So this particular coffee, I kind of bring it to a really... Just a little bit past first crack. Like, just, just a hair past first crack. Maybe, like, after first crack completes, probably about 10 seconds at the most. So it's not terribly, like, light, but it's not terribly dark either. Is this day and time software? That, that's a good question. You know, I'm, I'm, I decided that after, I, well, actually, I've been thinking about doing this particular show for a long time now. But I was always trying to figure out when to do it. I thought Saturday mornings at 10 for a bit, and then I was thinking, oh, I don't know. And so when we finally closed Hamden last week, I thought, well, I better start. And so I just started today. I just decided yesterday or two days ago that I was going to, oh, no, but I probably decided over the weekend that let's do Tuesday. So I'm interested to know what day and time is best. You know, if this works, great. If not, then what do you think? I'm very open. It's very flexible. This one's very flexible. Uh, all right, so now we're going to grind our coffee. And we're going to use the Barazza Virtuoso. And the Virtuoso is a really interesting grinder. Like, if you haven't used it, I'll pull that up as well. Here's the Virtuoso. And the, actually, this is the, vir, the what's pictured in the, in the website is the Virtuoso Plus, because the Virtuoso Plus has replaced this, pers, this particular Virtuoso. This is the very first, the, what I have here in front of you is the very first Virtuoso. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a great grinder, conical burst, stainless steel, um, more metal in the housing than the Encore. And this particular one has a mechanical timer to operate the grinder. However, I do have this thing attached to the base of it, if you happen to have noticed. This is called the Isato. And the Isato is something they've, they've actually discontinued several years ago. But the Isato was an attachment that you would buy and use with either the Virtuoso or the Encore, which is the, the Encore is the entry level. And, and, uh, blah, 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 blah. and so this one has a, so what this does, it has a digital scale to it, right? So this, this is, a, there's actually a little weighing, a weight measure, a weight scale, essentially. And you put the, the, the cup, the, the holder, and it automatically tears. And you have three settings, so you can actually have three separate grind settings. So it will grind to weight. So if I wanted to put 24 grams into one of the programming here, and all I have to do is hit start button, and it will grind the 24 grams, presuming that I have it filled, right? Otherwise, it'll just keep grinding. But I, I mean, I, while I do use this to a certain extent, I really just pre-weigh and then grind only what I need. So Rusty, Rusty's saying, if it's during this time, I'll have to catch the replay once I start school. Unless I incorporate you, oh, yeah, well, that we can do, that we can do. We can do, like, more education and coffee every Tuesday. But, you know what I mean? Like, you, well, it's flexible. At this point, as far as what date and time, it can be, it can move around. I, I was thinking that probably people want to do, would prefer to have coffee, like, talking in the morning rather than in the evening. But it could be other way. It could be other way. Maybe we'll look at the analytics and see what they say. So anyway, so back to the virtual. So this is the virtual. So, and this is the virtual. So plus, right? And the plus. What the difference between this one and the plus is that, as you can see right here, um, oops, well, my cursor. Should, well, yeah, there it is. This part here, this digital readout is actually a digital timer. So it still is timer based rather than weight based. But now you have a digital timer, plus it's a little bit more streamlined. And as you can see right here in the, where this is, on the plus, it actually has LED lights. So you can see 
you know, the coffee in the bottom. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice like that, kind of fancy. And the price really hasn't changed, right? What's the price on this now? Actually, Bratza just sent me a notice yesterday that they changed some of the pricing. So some of the pricing went up, some of the pricing went down. The Virtuoso Plus stayed the same, I guess, because it's a pretty new design or redesign, so it doesn't really have a lot of, there's no fluctuation. So 40, 40 millimeter conical burrs, it'll hold eight ounces up here, five ounces down here, you know, 100, what is it, 120 volt, blah, 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 550 RPMs. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I don't know, I mean, it works. That's what it's, And so this particular virtuoso, I've had since 20, 2007. And I got it used 2007, although I don't think it was very, very, very well, very much used. Like it was probably relatively, well, it was probably a couple years old by the time that I got it. So it lasts a while. So this is actually my personal one. So I normally keep this one at home. And, um, but it's, they're solid. I think they're solid. I think Baratza makes solid, solid grinders. And Mark says, I have a Vario, pretty much the same grinder, great company, all parts can be replaced. For, yes, absolutely. I, you know, they... When I won the uh, the Aeropress Championship, they gave me a Vario as one of the, the prizes. And we actually used it as a shot at the shop for our single origin coffees, and we said it as our grinder. And man, I think we broke it. That's why it's back in its box. But I haven't really, I haven't tried it. I haven't tried to figure out what's wrong with it. I should do that. I mean, it's been in its box probably for five, six years now. All right, so let's start grinding. So we're gonna take the coffee, pour it in here. And so I have it set so that the third position actually is set for 60 grams. Now it is a little bit loud. That's all right. And like compared to like more of the commercial type of grinders, like I had this at the Cafe du Spro for the last year. And I recently, oh, I just pulled it up because I put the R8 from Hamden, <coughs> the compact R8, to replace it. And it, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. But this is still a great grinder. And by the way, there's, there's 20 or 40 settings of grind clicks, right? And I totally forgot to check that. But yeah, middle, that's good. So Rusty says, Mom and I bought two virtuosos at SCA from the Bratza booth. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really great company. You know, as, a, as an operator, as a reseller, they're really great to work with as well. Like, for example, I mean, like we offer free shipping from our website. Like this, this grinder here, right, as you can see here, this is, we offer it for $249 with free shipping. And the great thing is that, as you can see here, it says this item drop shipped in the factory. So all I have to do is I tell them, hey, we got an order. Please send it to this address. Lickety split, it's done. Now we've got a little bit of a uh, of a little bit of a of a hiccup this week, because this is a week or two two weeks that Barats is actually changing their entire like back end, so all all orders are suspended until August 9th be, until they have their 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 system back and running. And I think it's going to change a little bit. Like they're going to have like a uh, a vendor portal, so it should be a little bit easier. So right now we'll send an email to someone and be like, hey, can you send this out? So I think now. It'll probably be a little more automated, so a little bit easier to make sure that everything gets out and then. But they've always like done things that actually make it, make the experience working with them better. All right, so here's our coffee. All right, nicely ground, huh? Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, and nice coffee aromas. All right, let me get this out of the way. So if you're just joining us, thanks for watching. We're here. This is our very first live stream on the on the Spur coffee channel and we're talking all coffee doing all about coffee and you know but if you're watching on the on the replay or if you're just joining us how does 2 p how does 10 p.m 10 a.m on tuesday work is there a better day maybe the weekend maybe the afternoon what do you think drop them in the comments below let us let us let me know and we'll see but we're trying to get a feel for where we're going to go with it right all right so now time for the brewing device so for today, I, thought, I figured we'd choose the most ubiquitous brewing device, the Hario V60 two-cup version. 
And this is one, this is actually one that I picked up in, in Japan because, you know, I found that over the years, trying to work with the Hario distributor in the United States is very, very difficult to the point where, like, we just stopped carrying them, you know, back, I don't know, it must be eight, nine years ago. We just, I was just, like, had enough. And so now whenever I'm in Tokyo, I'll stop. Maybe if I need something, I'll, when I'm in Tokyo, I'll grab it. Like, so I bought this in Tokyo. And it's, like, super cheap. It's, like, $5 or maybe less. I don't know. So this is the Hario V60 with the, in plastic, because I think it looks cool. Plus it's, it's more visually appealing, especially on video, right? Okay, so we've got our Hario V60. And of course, if you're not too familiar, the V60 is a pour over brewing device that's been around for quite a long time now. And it's really been the darling of third wave, big, why I'm not really sure, but people like it because the Venturi pattern of the ribbing, and then it's got this big hole at the bottom, and like this big hole, I think I I really do believe that it's this big hole that third wavers love this because it allows you to, especially early on in in the uh, maybe about ten years ago, especially like you could brew with this device and give this impression that you're making something very special while you're just running and gunning it and under extracting the coffee. But it looked cool because you know, like you're making a, cu a, a cup and for, for that individually. But here's the thing. So this big orifice at the bottom, while it's great for allowing the flow to flow and without restriction, it's also one that I think requires a lot more skill and commitment to brewing. Oh, let, oh, let me pull this on. Why am I keeping this on here? Sorry, sorry. There we go. So it, I think it requires a lot more commitment to brewing because if you could easily flow the water. I'll, I'll, let me show you. Look, I'll show you, right? So if I took this, and if I was to pour some water through here, uh, it just goes fast. So you could easily throw water through your coffee and get under extraction but it looks cool and you know if you tell everybody that your coffee is going to be you know like on the brighter tardier side get away with it but that's not my jam i like better extraction but that's neither here nor there today so we're going to use so so this is a, a conical filter a conical brewer which requires the conical filter. So this is the special Hario O2 filter paper. And these are designed, these have a, have a nice texture to them. And you can kind of see the texture, I think. All right, let me pull it up here, see if we can get the, the exposure. Yeah, you can see, especially though, though when my fingers are leaving a shadow, you can see that texture to it. So it's a nice paper and it, and it fits well. You just kind of open it up and bloop, right? Real simple. However, you have to find these. And these are, well, while they are available, and I do have a link in the description below to a, a three pack of, the, of these, these filters. And these are made in Japan. Nice, really nice quality. But if you're stuck and you don't have them, or you don't feel like going to get them, you can go to any grocery store and buy these Melita number four filters. This is the one from Wegmans, from our video about the different paper filters. So you can take this, and this is my hack, right? This is my hack. So obviously the, the shape of the Melita number four is this wedge kind of shape. That doesn't work. Huh? Huh? Doesn't work. That's, it's, in, it's incompatible. However, if we take this, if we look at the seam, there's a seam, right, that runs here. And if I fold the seam at the two points, right, at the, opposite, the opposing points, I fold it down and then I make a straight line between them. I now have this oblong isosceles kind of triangle with a radius. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you that I've had some level of education. Now, if I've opened the cone, I can now fit it. Look at that. Huh? There it is. The easy hack to the, and this will work at any conical filter. Hmm? Hmm? Look at that. That's what we're talking about.
All right, so we're gonna use this today. And then I'm gonna use this um, Yama serving kettle or pitcher, or whatever they call this thing, I'm not sure. We're gonna use that to brew on top of. Uh-oh. We need a little bit more height from our brewing device. All right, there we are. Okay, so now we've got our setup. Now you could brew this, and most people should, will, will brew this, and actually at the shop we'll brew this on a scale so that we can measure out exactly, well I could probably do that now, I should probably do that now. All right, we can, we'll use the scale to measure out how much water we're going to pour. So for this particular cup, we want to have, hello? hello? Who's that? Matt, sorry. what's going on? Come on over, Matt. Well, look who we have here walking. That's the problem with leaving your doors open here at the roastery. <laughs> this is Matt, the rat czar of Baltimore, or, or the former rat czar of Baltimore, who now runs Park and Perk. Park and Perk. Park and Perk, which is what? Tell us, tell us about Park and Perk. Park while and you're Perk. here, while you're here, Muscle, sit, pull that, pull the chair over. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now we've got, now we've got surprise guests. <laughs> so Matt is one of the, the the local denizens of Baltimore who has. Been the rats. So tell us, the rat czar was what? The rat czar became an iconic logo, I guess. Of rats. Of rats. Because Baltimore has a bunch of rats. It's a okay. city. It's a gritty city. It's a, gr yes, it's yes, a gritty, yes, yes. Gritty city. city. And the people of Baltimore embrace uh, the grittiness. So I once created a logo as a joke that. Basically became the symbol of Baltimore. Okay. And then people started calling me the Rat Czar. So how did that translate from Rat Czar to Coffee Guy? I am a man of many hobbies. And my hobbies spiral out of control. I collect Vespas. And Park and Perk is a mobile espresso Vespa. It's a Vespa cafe. Oh. So... Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. a three-wheeled Vespa from Italy with an espresso machine, a brewer, uh, a bun brewer, um, refrigeration, all of that. So I collect Vespas. I've always collected Vespas. And I saw the Ape, uh, I think it is B in Italy. You, okay. You're, you're, the, you're the very Ape, that makes one. sense. Okay, I think, I think it's B. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so I've always wanted an Ape. And I saw it for sale, and I purchased it. And I was just going to scoot around Baltimore and the Ape. But the Ape had an espresso machine on it. So I said, I'll either gut the machine, gut, gut the Ape and just drive it around, or I'll start a mobile espresso, you know, company. And that's how Park and Perks. Oh, all right. Yes. So, we, so you go to different events, right? Is that it? Yes, I'm prepping for an event today, and... My workshop is what fifty feet from your yeah, workshop. Yeah, yeah, it's just across. That's why I just room. wandered in. Uh, he's, a, he's always wandering. Pardon the interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. So we're actually bring. So we're doing our first live stream for the Spro Coffee channel on YouTube, Ooh. and now we're brewing coffee. So how do you brew coffee at home yourself? I brew on your standard Mister Coffee, uh, just drip, uh, drip coffee. Um, I also brew cold brew. Um, and that's that's my method of brewing. Uh, and how and do you it, measure your coffee at home? I measure the standard. What is it? One tablespoon per cup. One table. Okay, so here yes. that's that's what I'm, I'm asking that because that's what I'm leading up to. That okay. One of the things that I find that people ask me all the time is like, well, how do I measure coffee? And I'm like, well, I don't. I've measured with a scale. So that one of the th no matter that how long I've been doing this. I've always used the scale. Uh -huh. Like I don't know how to really use this. So I figured we're going to like measure now how much 24 grams of coffee is in Ta tablespoons, tablespoons, right? So oh, uh, interesting. So we're gonna do one, a two. This is like the Tootsie Roll thing. A three. Oh, oh. Ah. There it is. All right, so we're going to say 
It's not quite full, right? But we're going to say four. Three and a half. Let's say, let's say three and a half. Okay. Three and a half, four. And then now it's time to brew. Time to brew. Are you going to have some coffee with us? Have some coffee oh, I would love some coffee. All right, excellent, excellent. <laughs> All right, so let me, let me warm up some water here. Oh, do me a favor. Yes. On the bar, there's a there's two timers, one black, one white. Whichever one you grab is fine. So one of the things I like to do when brewing coffee is I like to use a timer. And the timer I run going up, right, from zero, because uh, I like to use the timer to to tell me where we are in the world. You have a seat. Mm -hmm. you, have a seat. Don't, you don't have to be outside the... Let's see what Mark has to say. He weighs, but on vacation, I have an air press group. Yeah, yeah, when well, you're on vacation. Like, here's the thing. Like, a, a lot of people will, a lot of people that I read online, they're always talking about traveling. And they're talking about, like, oh, I have my travel kit, and they've got all this mm -hmm, gadgetry mm -hmm. with them. Like, grinders, they're bringing hand grinders. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. do you, when you travel to make coffee, and you make coffee, how do you, what do you do? What's oh, your routine? Oh, that's a sore subject. Oh, sore. Oh, wow. I drink we just went on the first vacation, my family, you know, since this whole, the world. Well, right. You know, like that. I drink the junky, usually the one hotel we were in had the Keurigs. And who knows how old they are, right? Right, like The right. pods. They could have been sitting there for five years. I don't know. Uh, or if you're lucky, the uh, hotel has its own cafe. Um, but you never know what you're getting. Um, so I I missed coffee while I was on vacation. <laughs> oh. I missed okay. good coffee. You know. I see, I see. Yeah, from what I'm used to. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. All right, let me, let me lower this down because that way people can see what we're doing. So what I've done so far is I added about 80 grams of water for the first 30 seconds of blooming. And now we're going to... Continue on. So why am I using the timer? The timer I use to help gauge. So typically at the shops, I don't have the ability to taste people's drinks, right? People get yeah. upset if you take yeah. a sip. Yeah, of course. And so what I do is I, I like to use the timer to help me gauge how the brew has performed, right? So my target time is three and a half to four minutes using 24 grams of coffee with 350 milliliters of water. And I found that if we can get the, the, the brew to finish it by three and a half to four minutes, then it's within the, the parameters that we're looking for. So a lot of people will like worry about like how much at this time interval. And I find that with pour over brewing, it's not that critical, mm -hmm. you know, so. So what are you working on today? You're going to go to an event? I'm doing an event. What event are you doing? I am going to Pompeii. Pompeii Inn? Is that how you say it? The olive oh, oil the company. olive oil company. The yeah, 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 yeah. Company. Okay. okay. They're all from Italy and love uh, espresso. So. Uh, so pretty lucrative, the, the, the world of mobile espresso events. It, it can events. be. It can be. There's, there's a few different... Uh, worlds i guess there's the corporate world and then there's your uh you know your i guess public world would you call it like when it's just like somebody hires me for a birthday party let's say you know uh oh okay gotcha. so i do everything i like i like to serve everybody you don't like to say no <laughs> i don't like to say no that's good I do. that's good yeah. that's good Yeah, when I travel, actually, I don't normally bring coffee with me. Sometimes I do. And if I do, I usually bring it pre-ground. Because uh, I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. What are we doing here? Oh, almost. I don't normally use this vessel for brewing, so this, this lower piece. Should be looking at the scale. Oh, we're done. All right. 
And we're rolling right past 3.30. Almost there. Huh? Look at that. Not bad. So that's uh, an appropriate time. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm looking at yeah, three and a half to four minutes. Okay. And now we should be here yeah, 3.46. Yeah, we're, we're pretty good. We're pretty rolling. There's a glass. Whatever you want to drink out of. Yeah, that's good. That's good? Yeah, that's good. All right. That's good. All right, so we're going to... Now, some people like to do this... This Some priests like to do this, spin, this spinning thing. Mm -hmm. Evidently, because it's incorporating... I don't know if I believe that. Uh. Like, the, the idea is that people are like, oh, it, it just creates layers as you're brewing, but... I don't think that holds. But let's let's have you try it. You get the taste on it. Salute. Salute. What are your thoughts? Tell me your thoughts. That is delicious. That is very delicious. Uh, any f any f any flavors that you can discern or? I taste a mild fruitiness. Okay. Possibly. Uh, now I'm not a coffee expert like mr j here but uh <laughs> you're, in, you're an industry i'm guy. in the it's industry right. yeah yeah you don't have to d disqualify i'm yourself. all show mine's all show uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm like the circus of coffee oh nice <laughs> <laughs> and i also have allergies so my taste is a little off <laughs> oh gotcha yeah they started allergies allergies yeah allergies will do it yep yeah yeah what are we getting here so i'm getting a little bit of fruit I'm, i definitely get the fruitiness that you're talking about mm -hmm. i would say it's probably more like a to me it comes across more like a prune fruitiness mm -hmm. And this is the coffee here? This does... is the coffee. Oh, okay. So it's from Costa Rica, okay. the Tarazu Valley, by uh, three sisters. And um, let's see, what are, we, what, is it, the, the, what are the flavor notes? And here's the thing, like a lot of people will talk about like flavor notes. And, they'll, and like, some people that I notice on the forums or you know, coffee forums or people that are they're talking about, you know, I bought this coffee and I'm trying to brew it, but I can't get the flavors that the bag says. And it's like, well, one of the problems with the bag, and like, for example, this is, a, let me pull it up here for everyone to see. But like, for example, this, here, here what do we say here? We're saying here, in the cup, the, six, the Lot 16 white honey is clean and crisp with notes of orange, mandarin, and a popping dancing finish on the palate. Sounds great, right? However, here's the thing. When did I write that description? Exactly. Right? So it may have been weeks or months since the description that that they're using on their packaging was created like was it done at the farm level when they were buying it was it done from a sample that the uh the roast that the uh importer sent to them you know was it like two months ago was it last week you know and mm -hmm. so i think that a lot of people will tend to put a lot of maybe sometimes too much value in the tasting notes and look for exacting results in mm. or exacting notes in their own results but I think that that could be a problem because you don't really know when these are made. I see. Like here, we, I guess I can say now that we're reading it, there could be some, maybe that plum could be somewhat orangey, but I think it's still more plum. It, it is still clean and crisp. It's still, yes. like it, it clears off the palate. It's, it's very not, mild, I would say. Mild, mild. okay. It's okay. very mild, yeah. But it's excellent. It's, it is excellent. Like the best coffee you've ever tasted. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, God, I love having you on the show. <laughs> you can come on the show anytime, anytime. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So did the painting get finished at the spot? The painting is finished. The sinks are in. Um, I'm putting some shelving up. Today? I, not today. Oh. No. Um, I need electricity. That's very important. Still not yet? No. 
BG and E. Like there's no electricity at all in this. Oh, you have a little bit. I have a 15 amp circuit, which is just enough to plug a refrigerator in. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah. rough. <laughs> How? Well, did they have a date yet for you to, to have bring in the we power? We applied through BG and E at the beginning of the summer. Mm hmm. And I have a friend who did the same thing. His took about six months. So wow! From when BG and E said we can come out to when they finish. You know, one of my good friends, like he passed away now. He was Korean, but his father was this immigrant that came from Korea, hardcore guy. Like we would go to his house right when we were young, and like his, I remember one time especially, we go to his house. And the father's out there working on, like, a wood pile or something. And he's like, are you boys hungry? And my cousin and I were like, yeah, we're hungry, kind of hungry. Well, then chop wood first. There you go. <laughs> and so he had all these tools in their garage, like, like all kinds of heavy tools, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's got a jackhammer. Or he bought a jackhammer, didn't have a particular thing, but he knew that he was going to use it. So him is, so they own this place. This, they own Mount Washington Cleaners years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I I think I've met this guy. Okay. Yes, yes. And so years ago, they, they needed to, I guess, connect some kind of power to the building. Right? They needed more power. Uh-huh. Well, they're riggers. By, they're, in Korea, they were riggers. Yeah. So he, him and his uncle, or him and his brother, I guess is my friend's uncle, Don, they went out and bought rubber suits, climbed the pole, and connected to the live wires. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh, man, that guy's hard. Jeez. He was a hardcore Korean. I was like, that guy's very hardcore. That's insane. Yeah. It was it was very insane. Jeez. Very impressive. Like he, he was a he was a tough tough guy. Tough guy. Well, I've seen in Baltimore City my old garage that I stored uh scooters in. Okay. Somebody got jumper cables and put jumper cables up to the wire. Jumper cables coming down. And then, like, uh, what are they, alligator clip to there and then into their garage. Wow, that's some ballsy stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, don't do that. We're not advocating that here on the Spro channel. <laughs> so this Spro channel, I've been keeping up. Spro okay. channel is a new live stream. Well, no, no. So, so the sports channel, this is the first live stream. First live channel. stream. Okay. But the channel has all these like videos about how we make drinks and yeah. making coffee and things like that. Yeah. So it's a little more educational than my personal channel. Yes. Right? Well, that's where I uh, watch a lot of how to prep things. Oh, nice. nice I, nice. I watched your um, your Americano. Oh, no, no, uh, no wonder people are loving your coffee more, right? Ah! <laughs> Cheers to that, my friend. <laughs> oh, more coffee for you. Another round. You're already finished. Thank you. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah. So yeah, the, the the idea of this show is to come on weekly with a one hour live stream to answer questions about coffee that anyone may have. Coffee, and then also discuss different ways of brewing, mm -hmm. approaches to brewing, things like that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it should be hopefully be good. It'll be good. You're gonna be like the Ivy League of. Uh teaching well, thank uh, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so what's going on with the you bought a conestoga wagon right i bought a conestoga wagon because i buy weird things uh and the conestoga wagon the the thought uh i just need more hours in the day um i'm gonna have the coffee coach okay because it's like a coach conestoga and oh, oh right right coach as in as in a coach co not coach as yeah. in like coaching so i'm gonna uh screen print you know old saloon lettering coffee on, on the, the side on the side of the canvas oh wow yeah and then Did you take you have to take the canvas off i do okay. well the one's being currently a new one is being made that i can zip so like it can be secured sh secured yeah but it won't be i mean you'd still cut through it is that right? oh absolutely okay, okay. yeah 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 um, so the coffee coach, uh, like my, I like serving to the, the masses, you know, the, the everyday Joe, right. You know, oh, like, yes, yes. like the quick, but I like, I like it to be a good product. So that's, that's hard to find a quick, but good, you know? Yes. Like, yes. Quick, but good. Um, so that is going to be a pour and go coffee stand, like where you can drive right up to it, knock it out of your car. I'll pour from the wagon. I'll hand it to you in your car. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Coffee Coach. <laughs> and you're going to do that on Falls Road? On Falls Road. Okay. Yes. Yes. But no, no timeline yet? I'm hoping September. Okay. There's, you know how things are to get running. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to this person and say, I need this. And it's like, well, I'm four weeks backed up or whatever, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> so if you want stuff done, people do it yourselves, I guess. Is of the... course, of course. <laughs> Let's see. Rusty says, I just picked up a Hario Switch in Hawaii. Apparently, it's Hario's version of the Clever. Oh, Hario Switch. I'm not familiar with that. Let's have a look and see what we can find. That's not the one that Pete designed, is it? Oh, no, no, I guess not. All right, here it is. The Switch Immersion Dripper O2. Ah, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, this has got that lever. Oh, have, how is it working out for you there, Rusty? And then, uh, so Mark's asking a question. Mark's out in San Diego this week. What espresso machine is on that wagon? There is no espresso machine on that wagon. That espresso machine will be just drip. So Pop. why did you decide to not do espresso with this? this so this? espresso can take time, as you know. Yes. You can only work so fast with an espresso machine. There's no speeding that up. I mean, to a point, right? Right, right. So let's, you have a line of cars and they all want a cappuccino or a latte or whatever. You have to grind, you have to tamp, you have to, you know, put it in the, the espresso head, you have to steam. What's that take? What's that take a very fast barista? A minute and a half. 45 two. seconds. Yeah, okay, yeah. So <laughs> so let's say you have 20 no, cars. No, you, you yeah, know? Let's, let's say two minutes. Let's say two, two minutes. minutes. Well, yeah. from the time of washing the mug to, right, right. you know, uh, pouring the milk. I don't want to hold cars up. I just want to pour and go. Now, the espresso. But it's means, amazing how long people will wait. Like, you see the lines in front of the Starbucks? And Starbucks, they're. Like, oh, man, they wait a long time. Well, they're. They spill out onto York Road sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You can't have people spilling out of the falls. You road. can't. Not, no, not in the. Yeah. So country. I do not want to get in trouble with any county, uh, you know, people holding traffic up. I, it's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Oh, so he says it's not the W sixty, which is the one that our buddy designed for Hario. And then he's never, oh, you've never seen this. Where did you get it from there? And that's why I haven't, like, I haven't tried it yet. Okay. And then Mark says, the large orifice of the V60 allows coffee to drink much faster than the Clever's small. Yes, but I think that's, to me, that's one of the the problems or challenge, the better, the, uh, that's why I think that the V60 to make a really good brew requires a lot more skill because you have to be able to control the flow, either through the way that you're pouring or with the resistance of the coffee to the flow. Which is why I think that, you know, a lot of companies early on, like one company, Intelligentsia, used to put like 44 grams of coffee and then gun it. And that way they would get, with 44 grams to make a 12 ounce cup, you'd get the TDS reading that you want, that 18%. But did it taste great, you know? Mm. And then Mark says, the V60, the, the switch is like a V60. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it. They're really like uh, capitalizing on their V60 molds. That's yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty. Look at that thing. Is that three? Oh, and it's sold out. Oh, wow. Oh. Hybrid method. Simply add ground coffee. Nice. You should get one. I, yeah. You can make your coffees this way. Oh, well, at my event? No, no, that would be terrible. <laughs> no, at the, at the Conestoga. Oh, yeah. So are you going to call it Conestoga? Coffee Coach. Coffee Coach. Coffee okay. Coach. Maybe yeah. how about Coffee Connie? Coffee Connie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I may eventually put an espresso machine on it. I have a spare. 
Uh, oh, do you? Yeah, to, to answer. Uh, I use a Fresino or Fresino. I'm not That's sure. That's the gas powered one? That, so Fresino makes a dual fuel. You can use electricity if you have what they call shore power, where you can plug into a plug, or straight up propane. I mean, you can run this espresso machine in the middle of nowhere if you have, you know, uh, a deep cell battery in a in a propane tank. It's kind of oh, amazing. Yeah, interesting. I mean, you could be on Everest making espresso if you really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> If you could haul that thing up to you could haul, amazing. Hire a Sherpa. That's <laughs> I bet somebody's done that. At um, least brought it to base camp. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Because they're, they're there for a long time. They're like for months, right? Well, Is now it base it's, camp? it's become like the tourist thing. Uh, oh. I guess. Have you seen like the lines to get to... No, no, yeah, is it's it in, is it crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. But I, th I think I, I, it would be very difficult for me to make it to base camp. Like, it's oh, pretty yeah. high, isn't it? Oh yeah, oh, I think yeah. you have to train a lot to do. It. Yeah, you just go to base because yeah. there's base camp and that, but that's not like you still have to go to a, another camp, right? Before there's many. I think the base camp is like the parking lot, <laughs> basic, uh, you know. Uh -huh. And then I think there's different. But you stage along the you way. You stage along the, the way. Summit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I always thought it'd be cool to get to Everest, but yeah, yeah, soon they'll just helicopter you in so people can Instagram their picture, right? <laughs> From yeah, the yeah. top. Or, or actually, <laughs> what, actually, what, wait, what they could be doing now? Because I don't know if you you saw the Mandalorian, the TV series. No, I did not. Okay, I'm so one of those. You're not a Star Wars guy. Not, not really. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no. Now, <laughs> now we have no connection. No, no, but anyway, so this the Mandalorian, the reason I'm bringing that up is because the Mandalorian uses this, uh, instead of building sets, full sets, they actually built this massive 360 wrapping screen. Yes. That they put project the imagery. So my buddy is one of the DPs uh -huh. on Mandalorian. So what they could be doing now is you'll get the high-tech they probably have the high-tech like imax footage from everest oh yeah put that on the screen and then you can then instagram you can, that yes yes and be like i'm here yes huh? yeah tv world is crazy <laughs> how yeah, they yeah. can how can they can yeah like i went the... to the beach last week i last saw week. you saw that I went beautiful to bahamas it was yep. beautiful, man. yeah jay-z and i flew down there it was awesome yeah it's on my instagram it's it beautiful your uh, your Home Depot tub of sand. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Right here on the, <laughs> you know, do you don't know how many people actually like messaged me and was like, "Are you really in Bermuda?" I was like, "Yeah, no, dude. Yeah. Did you not look at the other photo?" Yep. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, I could... My uncle, even my uncle in the Philippines, was like, asked my dad, his brother, was like, "Did your son go to Bahamas?" It's like, no, no. It's like my dad was like, "I don't know. I don't think so. I don't you're, know." You're chilling. <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. Uh, so now we're here. Good to see you, Mark. Thanks for coming in. It's uh, it's now. What is it? It's now. We've been here an hour. So let us wrap things up. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're here. We're going to be here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Unless you tell me otherwise. So if you're watching the replay, let me know in the notes below that uh, whether you like Tuesday at 10 a.m. or not. We'll figure it out. This is our first time doing this. So. And if you have any topics that you'd like for me to cover, drop those in the comments below as well. I'll be happy to work on them for you. And uh, what else is there to say? So also, if you like uh, cigars and coffee, coffee and cigars, we do a live stream every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, on the Ono Coffee channel, which is the my personal channel. So come and join us there this Thursday, 8 p.m. And otherwise, see you next week at Tuesday, 10 a.m., and uh, we'll continue on. So have a great one. Thanks for tuning in. And... Uh, See you next time.